Hey guys, in this video, you're gonna learn everything you need to know to convert your car to an electric standalone power steering system. Let's go. So firstly, why would you wanna to convert to an electric power steering system? A big one is cost. This system is actually really cheap. And when compared to a factory power steering pump for a car like the rare Alteza in Australia, it actually works out to be really economical and you can upgrade for almost the same cost as going a factory pump. Next is mechanical load. And by removing the mechanical load of the engine, it's noticeably made it a little bit more revvy, which I absolutely love, especially the 3HG beams. When it's bouncing off the rev limit, it sounds amazing. A really good one is it makes it completely stand alone. I've got my engine on the floor over here and I haven't had to touch the power steering system at all to get that engine out, which makes it perfect for racing applications. First is the pump. This is a TS or AH Astra, and these are going on eBay in Australia for about $200. There are other pumps you can use, but this is the most common and also I feel it is the best pressure to provide the best steering feel. No matter which pump you use, they all work basically the same. They have a high pressure side that feeds the rack and a low pressure that the fluid returns to. The only difference would be the wiring. You want to install the pump somewhere that you can easily run the high pressure and the return to. The pump is on an alloy bracket, link in the description below, and is fixed to the chassis using riv nuts. On this car, the return comes from the rack, down the chassis rail, to a cooler in front of the radiator, and then it goes over to here. And I have just used trans cooler line to take it up from the hard line to the pump. The high pressure line seems daunting, but it's actually very easy if you use a universal LS power steering hose kit. These can be found on eBay and are easily available because it seems to be a common mod on those vehicles. It comes with two hoses, so you'll have a spare and every fitting that you could possibly think of for any application. I'll leave a link to the one that I got in the description below. Lastly is the wiring. It uses a positive and negative battery cable in 6 BNS directly to the battery through 80 amp fuse. The positive is a thick red wire and the negative is a thick brown wire. It then has an ignition wire, which is black, and a signal wire, which is blue. Now there's a couple of different ways of wiring this system. So I'll quickly show you the two most common ways of wiring this pump. Okay, so I have this set up so I can show you the ramp up times of the pump, how it turns on, and how to get it to start up instantly. Now I've got the pump connected to the battery with its main battery cables connected through an 80 amp fuse. Don't use one of those uh, audio fuses, the cylindrical type. They're terrible and they melt under hard amperage. They're designed for peaks and valleys, not for constant power. So don't use audio fuses. Uh, I believe this is an ANG fuse and I got it off eBay. They're about 30 bucks for a kit and then with a few fuses. So very cheap. Off the pump, you've got two small wires. One is an ignition source. That is a black wire. And then you have a blue wire, which is a signal. Now it does need both wires to run. For the first test, I've got both wires going to the same power source at the same time. This will make the pump slowly wind up. And that's actually how it's currently wired into this car. I've got it wired like this because the simplicity, but also this is a weekend car. So I don't need to worry about it having power steering the second I started. Now we'll connect both those wires at the same time to the power source. And now it's pumped. So now it's at the pressure and it's ready to use. 
The second way you can wire this up is by giving the ignition source power and then a few seconds later, providing power to the signal wire. I'll show you what that looks like. So power to your ignition source, then power to the signal. As you can see, it turned on at its full power instantly. That's how I would have it set up in my vehicle if it was a daily driver. Okay guys, so there is a couple of ways that you can achieve ignition wire getting power and then a few seconds later the signal wire getting power. The easiest way is to buy the kit off eBay. eBay has a kit for these pumps where it comes with all the wiring you need, including a box that is basically a pull down one of these, a delayed relay, uh, already inside of it. So you just follow their instructions, wire it in, and then you're good to go. If you're good with relays, then this is probably a cheaper way to go, depending on how much you get your cable for. There is a really good PDF by Vault Planet. They have um, a full explanation of how this relay works. This is a Nava unit, but their kind of relay is exactly the same. I suspect it's probably even made in the same factory. So on the front of this unit, you can see the pin numbers, sort of. This works like any other changeover relay. Basically, you provide constant power to the battery through a fuse on this pin here, which is pin 30. You run earth to pin 31, which is this pin on the side here. You run a signal wire from your ignition. Now in your wiring, this wire would be shared with the ignition wire on the power steering pump, that black wire we talked about before. Then you would run the signal wire to this top wire here, which is pin 87. This is a normally open pin, which means when you have no ignition input to this pin here, this pin will remain off. This is the pin that we're going to be sending to our signal wire. So we have our power to the battery to this pin, our earth to this pin, our ignition source will go to this pin and the ignition wire on the pump, and this wire will go to the signal wire on the pump. You then use these pins to set the relay to a delayed on for a couple of seconds. That would provide power to this normally open 87 pin a couple of seconds after it receives power to this pin, achieving exactly what we want and the pump will start up almost instantly. Okay guys, that is everything you need to know to build your own system. If you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. I'll try and answer as many as I can. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.